Hello, this is Bill Zoller with the Wellness Warriors Ministry, and today we're going to talk about uh, an interesting topic, misinformation, misinformation about the whole health and wellness uh, uh, issue and the whole medical issue, and uh, we're going to talk about some of the issues that might help us to be uh, able to scrutinize and determine uh, what is true and what is isn't, uh, what isn't. Uh, in this whole uh, uh, area of health and wellness. We have uh, really too much information now. We have more information than ever in human history uh, about research and about uh, pr uh, health products and food. Uh, and at the same time, uh, we have more disease than ever. So something is very, very wrong. And uh, I wanna try to shed some light uh, on that. Uh, much of the information we have is contradictory and confusing and, uh, uh, and involves half-truths uh, and uh, that type of information. Even some doctors uh, on uh, television now um, have become uh, quasi-entertainers and product promoters instead of providing objective uh, medical information as a medical practitioner. Um, uh, society is continuously bombarded about what is a healthy diet. Something as simple as eating we have made hugely complicated with a lot of contradiction and confusion and anxiety on the part of the uh, consumer. Uh, uh, many um, uh, of these uh, recent um, uh, uh, pr new products uh, add a confusion about uh, what's healthy and what's not and lead, lead to dietary fads that we certainly uh, want uh, to avoid. Uh, here's an example of a half-truth. It involves the paleo, P-A-L-E-O, the paleo diet and their position on eating legumes, beans, peas, and lentils, for example. Uh, they take the position of don't eat these because they contain what they call an anti-nutrient lectin, lectin that uh, uh, destroys tissue. But the whole truth is that this mostly happens in animals and not humans. Also, legumes have phytic, P-H-Y-T-I-C, phytic acid that may limit some of the mineral absorption, but um, beans are only moderately high in phytic acid and when you eat a uh, complete, varied, uh, optimal diet uh, that uh, includes vegetables and fruits and nuts and seeds and whole grains and legumes, you don't have to worry about that at all uh, because whole grains, onions and garlic, for example, really enhance mineral absorption. Beans and other legumes are among the most important and healthy foods on earth. They are a powerhouse of superior nutrition. They contribute to lessening diabetes risk. They help to stabilize blood sugar and they are great for their weight loss effects. They are very high in fiber and, and they help to lower cholesterol, very important issue. So, also, uh, research indicates that eating beans, peas, or lentils two times a week decreases the risk of colon, oral, stomach, and kidney cancers, among other cancers. Uh, also, uh, legumes are one of the most uh, healthy sources of plant protein, very high in protein. Uh, unless you have a food allergy or uh, an, uh, some other rare sensitivity, it is really, in my opinion at least, irresponsible to recommend not eating legumes uh, because they are a powerful uh, 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 a component of a healthy diet. Secondly, another half-truth that I want to uh, discuss, it involves what they are calling now low-carb diets, um, one, of, one of the new fads, I think. And um, here's the issue. To discuss carbohydrates without clarifying what kind of carbohydrates you're talking about, that is simple versus complex, is, is really not a good thing. Um, simple carbohydrates that contain a lot of sugar and, and processing, like 
like cookies, Oreo cookies, would be an example of a simple carbohydrate, without distinguishing uh, between that and complex, very healthy carbohydrates, like eating kale, um, really adds to uh, confusion and is also irresponsible. Now we have millions of people running around saying, oh, I just need to avoid carbohydrates, I need to avoid carbohydrates. That's only a half-truth, and uh, if, they avoid, uh, if they avoid all carbohydrates and start eating uh, a bunch of animal foods all the time, it is clearly to the detriment of their health. Complex carbohydrates are essential food uh, for everyone. I personally eat 80 to 90 percent of all of my uh, calories uh, from uh, healthy carbohydrates. This includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, mushrooms, and so on. Now I'm going to just uh, uh, talk a minute about uh, restaurants and hidden information at restaurants and uh, a comment about fast food. Fast food is mostly a nutritional nightmare. Many of the unhealthy products we find in fast food are misrepresented, hidden in slick advertising, uh, and it has really taken some aggressive food activists to help to uncover the truth about many of these uh, foods. Uh, one of the um, compounds you find uh, in a lot of fast food is uh, dimethyl uh, polysiloxane, dimethyl polysiloxane. It is a silicone substance with anti-foaming properties that is used in silly putty, breast implants, and cosmetics. It has been found in Subway salad dressing, Chick-fil-A chicken sandwiches, McDonald's french fries, KFC mashed potatoes and biscuits, Taco Bell cinnamon twists, Five Guys french fries, and other uh, fast food uh, 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 chains. Also in fast food, you frequently find artery-clogging trans fat. Not good. Also genetically modified ingredients. Uh, uh, that aren't uh, uh, documented on the uh, food product as being genetically modified. Antibiotics, uh, monosodium glutamate, MSG, and other uh, excitotoxins which have detrimental health effects. A lot of artificial food dyes. A, preserv a preservative called TBHQ, which is created from butane. Uh, uh, often these foods are very high in sodium, not good, and also uh, contain uh, high fructose corn syrup, which is an addictive sugar, which is a, uh, another uh, mini nightmare. Uh, there are other uh, harmful uh, ingredients uh, in uh, fast foods, uh, and uh, uh, one of them is uh, an industrial chemical that is used to make yoga mats, shoe rubber, and synthetic leather. It helps to keep bread spongy, and when it's heated, it creates a known carcinogen and many other negative health effects. So just to shift now and talk a bit, uh, a bit about conflicts of interest in the food information uh, uh, arena, I wanted to mention the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. Um, uh, this organization, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, has taken a strong stand that there are no good foods or bad foods, just foods. They continue to take millions of dollars in corporate sponsorship money every year from the meat, processed junk, dairy, soda, and candy bar industries uh, and in return offer official educational seminars to teach dietitians what to say to their clients. I find this just amazing and almost unbelievable, but nonetheless uh, true. This uh, organization, the Academy for Nutrition and Dietetics, says there is room for everything, including ice cream and a healthy diet. The thing is, ice cream uh, can be so habituating that we end, uh, uh, end up eating way too much of it, and uh, they don't uh, talk about that issue. Next, 
the American Heart Association receives substantial cash payments for certifying food products, including cholesterol-containing food products, as heart healthy, creating a financial incentive for discounting the relationship between dietary cholesterol and serum cholesterol. Uh, again, a source of misinformation and I would suggest dangerous misinformation. Next, the American Academy of Family Physicians um, partners with the McDonald's food chain. They partner with them. Uh, what McDonald's says is, we've worked closely with the AAFP, American Academy of Family Physicians, to determine what information would help family physicians educate their patients about how to live balanced lifestyles, especially when visiting uh, McDonald's. And again, I find this unbelievable that uh, competent uh, physicians would need to uh, partner uh, with a fast food chain that, uh, that provides us with myriad unhealthy uh, foods. I wanted to mention a little bit about uh, uh, POM brand, POM, POM brand, wonderful 100% pomegranate juice, uh, which has been uh, called down legally for deceptively advertising their products. Uh, and they did not have adequate support for claims uh, that the, that the pomeg pomegranate juice could treat, prevent, or reduce the risk of heart disease prostate cancer, erectile dysfunction, and uh, so it ends up that none of that was clinically proven and they needed uh, to have legal intervention in order to reverse that. Uh, just another example of misinformation. Um, uh, more uh, research misinformation. The egg industry, the egg board funds a study where they only measured fasting cholesterol levels you know, after you've uh, been without food for 10 or 12 hours or so, um, uh, which show more benign cholesterol uh, uh, results than levels that you take in a postprandial state, that is after you've eaten a meal, when uh, lab results uh, show much higher levels. And kind of a subtle uh, misinformation there, but nonetheless important. I want to say something about statin drugs. Uh, and the uh, pharmaceutical industry getting into the business of providing research about important things like statins. Many, many millions of people on statin drugs, I believe they are the most frequently prescribed uh, medications that there is. These are uh, drugs uh, that are anti-cholesterol medications. So, the validity, the validity of using statins for primary prevention, that is to prevent a first uh, cardiac event, um, has been questioned. Some researchers have claimed that studies conducted by scientists without conflicts of interest, uh, objective scientists, did not find a reduction in cardiovascular events in contrast to studies conducted by pharmaceutical companies. Very, very concerning with a lot of uh, implications for our health. I wanted to make some uh, recommendations um, uh, today uh, for us. Number one, always read a uh, food label, uh, uh, the ingredients uh, in your uh, foods. And I'm going to be doing a video soon on that topic. Uh, secondly, uh, get politically active and urge the FDA to advocate for people and not for the food industry. We need to educate cooks and chefs in restaurants with scientific knowledge about food, and we need to consider them to be key actors in this whole provision of, uh, of, uh, uh, of healthy uh, food. Very, very important. When possible, always select uh, organic and non-GMO food products, and avoid products that have natural flavors, unspecified artificial flavors, artificial colorants, MSG, and other excitotoxins. Why won't the food manufacturers on their ingredients labels specify specifically what is in them? Why won't they do that? Very concerning. 
at restaurants, uh, ask questions uh, about what you're getting. For example, is this farm-raised fish or not? Next, all, use your kitchen more. Don't rely on other people to take charge of what you eat. You, you do that. And uh, I would uh, urge everybody to stay in touch with us, to utilize our website at mywellnesswarriors.com, and to friend us on Facebook. William Zoller is the name, and the email address is wazoller at gmail.com. Thank you very much.